announcements. They're located on the back of your bulletin. Next Sunday is Pajama Sunday. It's a day after Christmas, so it'll be a little more casual than usual. Not that we're high church to begin with. You wear your birthday suit to, to a bed, make sure you wear something else. Um, but you don't have to wear pajamas if you don't feel comfortable. Um, let's see. But tonight at 7 o'clock, there's a hymn sing at uh, Zion Methodist Divine Creek. We're singing your favorite Christmas carols, I'm sure. It's actually at 6 o'clock, not at 7 o'clock. <clears throat> and our candlelight service is on. Friday, on the 24th, Friday at 4.30, the traditional uh, lessons and carol service. Is there any other announcements that should be made at this time? Please stand if you're able for the call to worship. Located in your bulletin. Come and see. The light of God has come into our world to proclaim God's justice and love. It has overcome the darkness and brought new light. Come and follow. Christ our companion has redeemed our world. He draws us into a loving family from every tribe and family and culture. Go and tell. The Spirit has equipped us for servants to love our neighbors as we do ourselves, to bring God's salvation to the ends of the earth. Come and see, come and follow, go and tell. In God's love, the nations of the earth will put their hand. It's time for our first hymn, number 234. Oh, come all you faithful. We'll sing first and last. Stand in fear, it is hard to look forward. When we hide behind complacency and impossibility, it is hard to see the light of Christ. What if we stop questioning long enough to hear the angel say, Fear not? What if we stop moving on all of us long enough to hear sending you to call us to a new path? What if we simply lie down with the wolf and the lamb? the cow and the bear, the lion and the child and the baby. Perhaps if we sit, sit in the silence, the waiting, the longing, the light of the candle surrounding the wreath. 
see the endless possibilities of the song. Move the paper, Mary. say you guys aren't exciting here at Newport. That's all I got I'm to sorry. say. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens though. I'm sorry. Like the worst part is I just stopped taking pictures. So, <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. You want to replay it? Sorry about that, please. Let's try again. <laughs> no, we <be> right. <laughs> Thank you. Then we're going to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before we do the next thing you said. Okay, to go ahead. You need a little excitement. You gave the heart. On behalf of our church family, we welcome both of you and are so glad you're with us. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a blessed one. Thank you. Thank you. That's for you, Dan. Oh, thank you. That's all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sister Mary. We're delighted to have you with us. We'll miss you for the month that we're gone. Thank you very much for the gifts. I couldn't do it without Sharon, definitely, and me. potatoes at that other church that I'm at and they didn't make it home and I didn't realize my husband loves Irish potatoes. And somebody came up to him the next week and asked him how the Irish potatoes were. He didn't know because I ate them all on the way home. <laughs> they didn't have his name on them. So I went and felt bad and bought him some. All right. You can wave and say hello to your neighbor. Now that we've been visiting him. Well, you guys had some excitement this morning. All right. Now it's time for the children's message. Does anybody know what this is? Yeah, what does it look like? It's a light, right? I actually use it to keep track of my doggies. I have a lot of yard, and this goes real far, and I can see them when they're running around. Now, this shines for, us to, for me to see the doggies with, and sometimes people use them for other people to see you. You have a light, you shine it, they can see where you're at. Um, and light doesn't seem to be shining now. You know why? Because I haven't pushed the power button. 
on, right? That's how lights work. It has to be in the power source connected to the battery without me pushing the button. And this is bright as heck, so that's why I'm not shining a little bit. Um, without being connected to the power source, being powered up, it doesn't work. And it's the same way with us. Jesus is called the light of the world. And we are supposed to be connected to Jesus so we can also shine light to those that need it as well. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the love of Jesus. Help us to understand him and follow him more closely. Help us to shine your light into our world. In your name we pray. Our next hymn is number 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Please stand if you're able and sing with me. We'll sing the first and last. Sharon, I guess I'll start. I have an update on Wanda. She called to her this morning, and her surgery went well, for those that don't know. Um, everything's good. They sent her home the same day of the surgery, which I can't even imagine. Um, she had a really rough time when she first came home, but she's healing up now. Um, she goes back Tuesday to have catheter removed and make sure everything's okay. Um, also, she asked me to put um, William, her nephew on the prayer 
kids, our teachers, um, that they stay safe and, and in school in the new year. Uh, we have uh, several on our list that we regularly remember. Um, let's see, unspoken requests for also a list of those that need healing. Um, we had one request from the internet this morning. The Coombs family, they have a grandson in the hospital. I don't know exactly what's going on, but the grandson is in the hospital. Um, we've been praying for Joshua. He is actually home for Christmas, so we're thankful for that. Let's just continue to pray for him. Uh, for Weezer, I don't have another name other than Weezer, but Weezer had a heart attack, and we're praying for him. Nancy is recovering from uh, kidney stones, where Sharon still has her abscess. And the Casero family, uh, as well as Pastor Gose's family. Uh, they pass, and so pray for them. Anything else we should be praying about? So let's go to God in prayer this morning. Lord, it's a dreary day outside, and we know we can still laugh, even in the midst of fire and <laughs> calamity and things not getting in the mail. We know you're still in control. We can still laugh and have joy because you are here in the midst of it mess of life. We also want to lift up all those we regularly remember, Louise, Ed, Chase, Lawrence, Austin, Sue, Diane, Angie and Ray, Shirley. We also want to lift up Wanda, who's recovering from surgery. I thank you that things are starting to improve and that uh, we just pray that you continue to heal her. Having two surgeries so close together is a lot on your body, so I pray that you continue to heal her. I also want to lift up unspoken requests. Maybe someone's watching online or don't feel comfortable sharing the word. I ask you to hear those prayers. Uh, for William Rimbart, who's having his tonsils out soon, I pray for calmness and peace about it. Um, and that it's a short-lived uh, get back to his old self soon. I pray for healing for Dina, Gail, Beth, Bobby, and Lori. Lord, hear those prayers as well. I mentioned to those that have COVID, I um, want to also continue to lift up Sharon's family and Jane's family, but all those that we know today that have um, COVID. Lord, it's a scary disease. So I just pray that you give us peace in the midst of all the mess of life and that you also be with those that are sick, that you help heal them as well. For Joshua, I'm thankful that he's home with his parents and that he's able to enjoy a holiday at home. I just pray you continue to be with him when he goes back and continue to keep him safe. For Weezer, who's had this heart attack, I can pray for continued healing. Nancy, who's had a kidney stone surgery, I ask continued healing for her. For Sharon, who's still dealing with his abscess, I pray that the medicine works and the pain is managed well and it can get fixed soon. And for those that are mourning this day, especially the Casero family and the Ghost family, and all those that are looking at the empty uh, seats around the table and Christmas and holidays remind us that um, my loved ones are gone with you. So we just pray for comfort for those that mourn this day. And we thank you for the opportunity to be in worship together. And hear us now as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give up. 
us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Our scripture for today is from the Gospel of John, John 1, verses 1 through 14. John 1, 1 through 14. In the beginning, the Word always existed. He was with God and He was God. He was in the beginning of God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Life itself was in him, and this life gives light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent John the Baptist to tell everyone about the light, so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was only a witness to the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was going to come into the world. But although the world was made through him, the world didn't recognize him. Even his own land and among his own people, he was not accepted. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn. This is not a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan. The rebirth comes from God. So the Word became human and lived here on earth among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. May God bless the reading of his Word this morning. Now we all have moments where we think we have something right, but we missed out on some of the details. And I have had some doozies. <laughs> And just recently, we bought tickets for a sub sale. And I got up to the fire company, and nope, there was no subs to be had because the sub sale is actually today, not yesterday. I never read the tickets on there, and I just assumed it was a Saturday, I guess. I just knew I was right, because we women are always right. Correct? Yes, sir. Right. But I discovered I didn't understand as clearly as I thought. Now, in the midst of our Grinch story, the Grinch, he sneaks around in the middle of the night, stealing Christmas away, or he thinks he is, when Cindy Lou actually catches him in the act of stealing her Christmas tree. The Grinch, he lies to her with ease, and he continues his work. He completes that task, like I said, at night in the dark, where it would be easier to do. He is convinced that what he's doing is going to solve all of his problems. This would get rid of the Christmas that he hated. Unfortunately, he doesn't understand what his problem really is. The Grinch didn't get that his problem wasn't Christmas. It wasn't his heart wasn't right. He had a wonderful, awful idea to try and take the joy out of Christmas. Now, there's a scripture from Isaiah 9 that we read this time of year. It says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. A child is born, a son is given, a government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Grinch's behavior is an example of someone walking in the darkness. Sometimes we sense that darkness around us. We just look at the TV. Don't look at the TV, but if you look at the TV, you see that. There's a, this darkness, this hatred. Things that are happening in this world that make us experience such darkness. We can see this side of the Grinch, that dark side. His hatred that he brings, tries to take the joy from the movies. But I want you to notice, there's a little flicker of light in that darkness. If you read the story, you may not have seen it. Dr. Seuss clearly shows us that the Grinch really is so evil that he will lie to a child. I probably could lie to a child, but I don't have one. But it's evil to lie to this poor little child. But you also notice there's a pat on the head. He pats on the head 
And she asks for water, and he gives her a cup of water. He does that for Cindy Lou Who. We see a little flicker of happiness and kindness in the Grinch that we just gloss over. He lied, but there's this brief flicker of goodness and kindness. And it may be one of the few acts of kindness that the Grinch ever performed up to that point. We don't know, so we don't know the whole story. But we begin to see that his heart is starting right there to, start to grow just a little bit. We're told that he hated Christmas. He hates joy and laughter and relationship and the community. They just sing and are too happy. He hates that too. All the things that these Who's and Whoville celebrate because his heart was two, three sizes too small. He had a very small, closed heart. And let's face it, we say monsters generally are not born, they are made. Probably due to his experience he had that was painful, and he was wounded, that's why he's full of hate. Except for this moment of kindness, that flicker of light in the darkness. And that light can flicker still for your loved one that doesn't know Jesus. That addict that just can't shake their demons, there's still light for them too. Or that meeting relative across the table that just has to say something during dinner. God is still a flicker of hope for them and for us too. Living in that place of darkness can rob us of the ability to have hope, love, and peace that we celebrate in Advent. We usually think of love as an emotional response to someone we're familiar with or compatible with. Maybe you enjoy their company. At least you hope so. But love isn't just about loving the people you know that like you and will resemble you. It isn't about loving people who are always kind and loving either. God calls us to love everyone. Everyone. And I don't know about you, but that's hard for me. I don't love everybody. There are times when I'd rather be angry with someone. It would be easier to just say they're different than me. And not in a flattering way, they're different. Sometimes it's easier not to listen to people I know I'm already going to disagree with. But in God's eyes, we, may, we find that maybe those differences aren't as big as we thought. Maybe God can make a way for me to understand why someone believes different than I do, or behaves differently than I do. I need to do this myself. Not to understand fully, because I can't, but to love like God loves. And love doesn't mean that we tolerate injustice or evil of any kind. I'm not saying that. But God wants us to love in a way where we treat one another with awareness of our own sins, our own flaws, and before God. One of the few positive things about being in recovery myself, I know I'm flawed. I'm a drunk. <laughs> I know that. And I have done unspeakable things. But I know that I messed up already. And I need Jesus. And you do too. So we should try to have compassion for those that are wounded so bad that they try and steal Christmas. But for the grace of God, you could be a bitter green Grinch yourself. So don't give up on that Grinch in your life. The Grinch tries to steal Christmas, but he also lets a little tiny bit of light come in. And in the midst of the darkness, love does break through. He still helps Cindy Lou Who. Because the light always shines through. It's the heart of what Christmas is all about. To receive Jesus, the light of the world. And that light will carry the government on his shoulders. Not as a warrior, not as an oppressor. But as the prince of peace. Peace, wouldn't that be nice right about now? Yes, there is peace because this baby was born. God came, Emmanuel, God with us. Hope lives within our hearts, enabling us to shine God's love brightly. And we sh when we shine bright on dark days, others see Jesus in us. Unfortunately, it's dark out there. It's really dark. But the good news is we carry the light of Christ with us. The true light that gives light to all was coming into the world, John 1 says. We are surrounded by lights. I talked about my pretties. And they remind us, these twinkling from the trees or the rooftops, this all began when Thomas Edison's vice president decorated his first, his Christmas tree with lights. And so Edison jumped on the bandwagon and invented the first light bulb there. 
idea caught on, obviously, and still continues today. But long before that first Christmas light, God had one of his own. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And this light was also meant for trees. But this time the tree would be a cross at Calvary. And even after 2,000 years, Jesus is still shining bright, chasing away the darkness. So each time you see a twinkle of light this year, may it be a reminder of the one who gives light to all, even a Grinch. Let's pray. Lord, be that light in our lives. It might be dark outside, but we can have that light in here and show it, just take that light and not keep it to ourselves. Share it with all we meet. In your name we pray. Does anybody have a favorite song they'd like to sing? church, I mean, you think I'd do it. But we'll sing the first, third, and last. This is my song. I don't know if I know that song.
guess. Or I know the tune in some way. Yeah. Somebody else has a favorite? That's 218. 218. Came upon a midnight clear. Sing first and last. Shepherd washed their feet.
Before Christmas carols, it's at 6 o'clock at the Dividing Creek Methodist. And Christmas Eve service is 4.30. So come uh, with joy in your heart. <laughs> now I see the benediction. Pastor, I'm yes. sorry. Yes. Uh, the collection plate, we didn't take the Oh, today. sorry about that. Uh, that's all right. If you want to make sure you put it on the way out, you can put your offering in there. I skipped over it for some reason. Now we're going to have to see. Good reminder, put your offering in the plate. Six. They change the time. Can we sing the God Be With You song? Is that right? Thank you.